Hi there, this is Dr. Saraswati from Arunachalingam University, Department of Resource Management. Based on today's topic, first we would look, look into what is work physiology. Work physiology is a term related with industrial engineering that is concerned how the human body manages with physical stress, work strain and work environment. In this field, one would study about the physical toll that the work takes on a person in order to minimize it. Work physiologists relate their understanding in assessing and designing the workspaces that reduce physical fatigue, abolish occupational injuries and amplify overall productivity. A tender for the information about how the body functions under variety of environmental conditions, the amount of rest it requires and when it is able to work at peak levels. Physiologists study few of the body systems that includes metabolism, respiration and circulation. They also comprise of skeletal, muscular and cardiovascular activity. Work physiology is concerned with the metabolic cost of work and the technique to minimize it by making the workspace as ergonomic as possible. This branch of the physiology also studies the changes that result in human body as a result of being exposed to single or multiple instances of work stress. Information gained from work physiology is used to design the workspace that suit an extensive group of people. Now, the objective of work physiology is to make sure that the worker performs his or her task securely in the most resourceful manner possible within the work environment. Human beings come in all sizes and shape and this makes it demanding for the work physiologist to design environment appropriate to every type. Normally, the environment isn't a controlled one. There may be loud noises, flying dust particles and heat and for, for example, which the body has to deal with. This branch of physiology monitors the amount of energy people spend on their task and ensure that they are not pushed beyond their physical capacity to work. Fundamentals of Work Physiology What is physiology? Physiology is a combination of mechanical, physical and biochemical functions of living organisms. Physiology has traditionally been organisms. Physiology has been divided between plant physiology and animal and all living things physiology. Physiology is the study of how the body functions. The capacity of human body to use energy and apply force depends upon 1. The capacity of the cardiovascular and the respiratory system to deliver required fuel and oxygen to the muscles and carry away the waste product. Second one would be the muscle strength and the endurance which depends on the cardiovascular and respiratory limitations. Third, ability to maintain proper heat balance within the body. Oxygen consumption and heart rate are proportional to energy expenditure in physical activity. 4.8 kilocalorie of energy expenditure requires an average of 1 liter of oxygen which is equal to 4.5 liter of air. As physical activity becomes more strenuous, energy expenditure increases and so does the oxygen consumption which is equal to the respiration rate and the heart rate. You move on to the next one would be the muscular effort. Physical effort is carried out by your muscles and therefore is often called as a muscular effort and there are actually two types of effort. One would be the static or the postural effort and the second one would be the dynamic or rhythmic effort. The static or the postural effort is where a muscle remains contracted for a period of time but there is no movement as in holding a picture against a wall or carrying a bag of shopping. Holding a static or a fixed posture can be very tiring as your muscles do not get time to relax. A muscle which is heavily contracted squeezes against the blood vessel next to it, restricting its blood flow. This cuts down the del delivery of oxygen to the muscle and the removal of waste product, lactic acid from the muscle. Thus, results in muscular aches or pain. Any fixed posture will bring on these symptoms. For example, standing to attention or sitting upright. Dynamic or rhythmic effort is one where rhythmic contraction and relaxation of a muscle which does result in movement as in pulling, opening a drawer or walking up chair. Dynamic work is less tiring and more efficient than static work. This is because during dynamic work, a muscle contracts and relaxes rhythmically which makes it act like a pump for a flow of blood into the blood vessels, allowing the blood to supply more oxygen and take away more of lactic acid than during the static work. As we all know, there are three different types of muscle tissue in our body. The one would be the smooth muscle tissue 
which is located within the walls of various body organs. Second would be the cardiac muscle tissue, as the name indicates, forms the heart. Third is the skeletal muscle tissue. Again, as the name indicates, forms the muscle that makes us move. The skeletal muscle fibers are actually made up of bundles of muscle fiber which can contract together in one direction. During movement, when a muscle contracts, the muscle fibers reduce in length. So, the amount of movement that the muscle can produce depends on the original length of these fibers. The strength of the muscle will depend upon the number of fibers that it contains and the cross-sectional area of the muscle. Muscular Endurance it is the ability of the muscle or the muscular group to remain contracted over a period of time and endurance can again be static or dynamic. Static endurance can be determined by the length of time a limb can maintain a particular position whereas dynamic one can be measured by a number of times a limb can perform a movement against certain resistance. Muscular strength it is the maximum amount of force that a muscle can exert under muscular or maximum contraction. The amount of force that can be exerted by our limbs depend on the body posture and the direction of force. For example, when standing, we can exert more force and when pulling backwards than when we are trying to push forward. There are several factors that influence our muscle strength and endurance. One would be age. Our strength increases in our teens at early 20s and reaches its maximum by the middle to late of 20s and remains at this level for 5 to 10 years and afterwards begins to decrease gradually. Sex In general, women are about two thirds as strong as men. This is because men have a greater muscle mass as percentage of body mass compared to that of women. Body belt Usually, 95th percentile person of a population will be stronger than the 5th percentile. The athletic or muscular looking person will tend to be stronger than the others. Among the people of equal body size, the differences in strength may be due to the amount of muscle tissue, body shape and proportion. Fatigue The buildup of lactic acid in the muscle due to static muscle work causes a gradual decline in the muscle work because a gradual decline in the muscle strength Fatigue can be delayed by adopting comfortable working posture, changing our posture now and again, decreasing the intensity or duration of muscular effort, training or practice having adequate rest period. Exercise We can increase our muscle strength and endurance through exercise up to the limits of our maximum physical potential which is mainly determined by the genes we inherit from our parents. Heat it is especially when combined with high humidity decreases our muscular performance, especially the endurance. Cold Cold will not affect the muscle strength if we wear adequate protective clothing, but it can affect our manual dexterity. Clothing and equipment we carry will add to our overall weight and therefore will need an extra muscular strength or energy to move. Motivation and emotional state like fear, anger or excitement can temporarily increase our muscular strength but the skill and accuracy may suffer. Nature of our job Manual workers are significantly stronger than the other type of workers. Postural age Backrest increases pushing strength by directing all our strength by forwards. Footrest can increase pulling strength by allowing us to brace our legs. The amount of force that can be exerted by our limbs depends on our body posture and the direction of force that we apply. Now there is optimal use of muscle power. For this we have 7 guidelines to be followed. As mentioned above, we have avoid any kind of bend or unnatural posture. Bending sideways is more harmful than being bending forward. Avoid keeping your arms stretched either forwards or sideways. Lead to a rapid fatigue and reduce skill of operation. Work sitting down as much as possible. Arm movements should be either opposition to each other or symmetrical. The working field should be at the best distance from the eyes of the operator. Hand grips, operating levers, material should be arranged around the workplace. Handwork can be raised up by the supports under the elbows, forearms or hands. Now we have a table which speaks about the activity level and the example of the activity and the energy requirement in kilojoules per hour. Next we move on to the principles of body mechanics. 
Body mechanics refers to the way we move during everyday activity. A good body mechanics may be able to prevent a or correct a problem with posture, the way one stands, sit or lie. It is a study of the proper body movement to prevent and correct the posture problems, reduce stress and enhances the physical capability. Posture is an important component of body mechanics. A good posture generally means the spine in its neutral or resting position. The four normal curves of the spine are natural. This position is not static that is a fixed and it is individual. A neutral spine is one in which the position is comfortably maintained by the disc, bones and ligaments. Body mechanics once referred to as postural activities only. Generally, the term has been replaced by biomechanics. The application of kinesiology to the use of proper body movement in daily activity to the prevention and correction of problem associated with posture and to enhancement of coordination and endurance. When we do not move correctly and safely, the spine is subjected to abnormal stresses that over time can lead to generation of spinal structure like disc, joints, injury and unnecessary wear and tear. Body mechanics protect one from injury by aligning body segment to each other. Using a good body mechanics reduce fatigue to prevent the strain on the spine and body mechanics can also provide balance and stability. By standing straight, the main parts of your body that's your head, chest and pelvis are properly aligned one over the other to maintain good balance. Body alignment is the proper relationship of body parts to each other to avoid unnecessary strain or injury. Now what is the purpose of body mechanics? The main purpose is to provide maximum comfort and relaxation and it also aids in the normal body function. It prevents the contraction and neuromuscular deformities and complications. They also help to conserve maximum possible energy by preventing unnecessary strain. Now to define body mechanics. It is a science which deals with body force and motions and among it the major principles can include using the muscles effectively, the second one taking advantage of the momentum, third considering the center of gravity of the body. Now let's see into the using the muscles effectively. It includes employing the strongest muscle feasible, setting the muscle that are to do the work before contacting a load, contract muscles slowly and using them rhythmically. Leg muscles being stronger than the back muscle should be used for lifting loads. This is accomplished by one standing with knees slightly bent or kneeling close to the load and lifting with a slow steady pull. Now, the study of muscles used in performing work indicates that smaller ones tire more quickly than the larger, thought use of smaller muscles involves expenditure of less total energy. Greater tiredness is probably due to fixation. For polishing a horizontal or any large surface, the full arm and even the trunk muscle with their large energy cost may be recommended instead of a smaller muscle with their lower energy cost. The forearm performs more naturally and comfortably. In this case, the energy cost may be used or should be disregarded. Muscle exerts its max greatest force when extended and the force diminishes as the muscle shortens. Hence, when a person is trying to lift a heavy sofa, his legs are slightly bent before grasping the load and straightened as the load is being lifted. The cost of speed in the movement has already been mentioned in the sections on pay. Now, the rhythm in the muscular performance may be defined as the repetition of movements at the same tempo. The pleasure experienced by rhythmic movement in songs, dance and other art forms have been appreciated since the early history of mankind. It is the province of aesthetics to explain association of rhythm and joy. But rhythm has also utilitarian uses. Rhythmic work is less tiring than non-rhythmic and the basis for this is the existence of double sets of muscles for accomplishing the work. When they work rhythmically, one set rests and the other set works. In non-rhythmical movement or work, both the sets operate at once and as example for this would be a cleanse fist. Now taking advantage of momentum. It is avoiding stops and starts, change of speed and sharp changes in direction. 
Free flowing motions are the least tiring movements because one motion moves smoothly into the next rather than stopping abruptly and then starting again. The waving of a flag in a breeze is an example for free flowing motion. In polishing or dusting a larger surface, as mentioned, the end of each movement may be rounded to make the return stroke a continuation of the forward stroke. Bed covers can be tucked in with a long sweeping stroke, avoiding abrupt stroke. Abrupt motions were criticized by the college student janitor as less intelligent mopper who pushed the mop to one end of the stroke to hang on to stop the thing before reversing its direction, a terrific waste of energy as she mentioned. Considering the center of gravity would be the next one. It is of importance in lifting, pushing, supporting or carrying a load and also in reaching to get an object. It is a desirable to keep the load and also in reaching to get an object. It is point as well as a correct alignment. Note how much closer the baby is to the woman's body in the good as compared with the poor method of lifting. The custom of carrying the baby on the mother's back as the Japanese do is the best example of keeping the load closer to the body. That way of carrying a baby is increasingly seen now in other parts of the world favored by the use of the flat baby carrier. Applying force to the center of gravity of load to be moved is an economical way of energy. In studying housework, it is important to recognize the patterns of time and energy, cost of housework not only for individual and household but also for their wider social and economical implications. Both the external factors, especially the number and the age of children in the family and gainful employment of the wife and the internal factor of attitude towards the housework affect time and energy cost. At the same time, there is recognition that such costs are affected by the work environment which is to some extent under the control of the worker. Concern of home managers has broadened from acceptance and or reduction of time and energy cost for individual and families important as these objectives are to include relationship of these costs with the near and far environment. Let us look into the analysis by the elements of motions. According to Barton in 1951 itself, he studied 8 else men's of motions including 3 arm reaches to heights of 46 inches from inches and 72 inches true trunk bend to 22 inches and 3 inches from the floor and the body pivot combined with the arm to reach to 36 inches. Energy consumed was in proportion to the height of reach and the depth and the type of bend, the trunk or the knee. Bending the body is more costly than reaching up with the arms because mode of body weight is moved in bending. This is an important information of consideration in planning storage for the home or for placing items in existing storage. Train may be a problem as well as the energy cost. Pace. Pace of activity affects energy cost. In a study, study of energy cost of walking, greater speed increased energy expenditure per minute of your time. Nevertheless, in relation to the distance covered, total expenditure of energy was greater but slow pace probably because more steps were taken over the same distance. Thus, walking 108 steps per minute compared with 96 steps per minute increased the energy expenditure by 3.9%. In general, though not all studies, slowing down has advantages in using less energy if the type of motion remains or be unchanged and also has advantages over the heart. Now the next point would be on the effective use of body. With the focus on time as one of the major resources in family life, improvement of work in the home has frequently emphasized reduction in time used for work activity. There are, however, many other advantages in increasing effectiveness of work methods besides conservation of time. The body effectively has advantages for the individual, notably in relation to health. The body remains the most important item of household equipment and it is a tool that will not change in the foreseeable future. Also, improvement in work methods may reduce overall boredom resulting from long accustomed routine habits of work. It may reduce frustration that has uh, arisen because of lack of effectiveness on job. It may result in the creation of family resources such as increased skill and in more favorable attitudes towards work.
Because of importance of the body in performance of work, it is well worth to trouble to develop the skill in using the body effectively. To do so requires an understanding of how body functions in activity and broadening the concept of energy management beyond mere energy expenditure heightens the concern for the total use of the body. There are important physical costs of body besides the energy such as circulation of body and strain on the skeletal structure. Feelings of comfort and tiredness are both associated with the physical cost too. Body positions and motions are the key to effective body use. Feeling of comfort and of discomfort result from the use of muscle and skeleton. Posture along with the motions of posture coordinate with the lesser amount of energy expended. For example, less comfortable position but though the trunk bend requires less energy than the knee bend, it may be uncomfortable and the body strain may result. Next would be the posture. Keeping the body parts in alignment resulting in stability when the various body weights are correctly positioned. Each scattered over the base of support. Now consider the pull on the back muscles necessary to maintain stability in. Now incorrect posture whether standing, sitting or using a tool muscle constructed to do certain things do them. Incorrect posture muscles not so constructed must do the job. When any part gets out of line muscular effort is required to maintain the body balance in addition to the work the body is doing. Strain may also result. When there is a problem of maintaining balance, broader base of support is necessary. The feet may be placed wide apart or parallel with one another in advance of the other. Practice of body mechanics helps you maintain a physical fitness. Practicing good posture and good body mechanics will take a while to get used to. A physical therapist can help you to use good body mechanics. In the absence of a physical therapist, now try using a yardstick to keep your back straight as you go about a normal daily activity. Keeping the back straightened will be painful until you get used to it because more muscles are utilized in standing or sitting upright than while slouching. The goal of body mechanics is to learn how to move the body so as to prevent further injury to spine. Awareness of common mistakes and proper principles can only help to achieve this goal and one such principle concerns posture. Poor posture is one of the main causes of neck and back injuries. The chin tucks or cervical retraction involves sitting or standing erect while gently pulling your chin back to a comfortable position. Think of a turtle bringing his head back into its shell. This exercise should be performed in sets of 10 starting with one set and working up to 2 to 3 sets several times daily. Shoulder squeezes or scapular retraction can also help to improve the posture. Shoulder squeezes involve bringing your elbows behind you while squeezing your shoulders blades together. Do this 10 to 20 times while holding the squeeze for count of 5. This motion increase the mobility of your neck and back making it easier to stand erect and both of these exercises should be performed pain free. If pain does occur try decreasing both the number of sets and the frequency. Now if pain persists as usual stop the exercise and consult your physician. The compliance towards exercise required to maintain or improve posture will lead to proper spine alignment. Now this in turn will help to decrease the intensity and the frequency of painful flare-up. Slump splitting or standing represents faulty body mechanics and though it is a common mistake it must be improved upon. If both head and shoulder remains erect and balanced throughout the day regardless of the activity being performed then the chance of future back pain is lessened. Now let's look into the improvement techniques. There are three main techniques. One would be pathway chart or the flow diagram, operation chart and process chart. An operation chart is similar to the process chart except that it picks up in particular step in a whole process. Operation analysis is detailed study of different operations involved in doing a work. It becomes necessary in order to investigate the shortcomings of the existing method and to develop an improved procedure. It suggests whether some elements should be eliminated or combined or their sequence should be altered in order to be obtain effective utilization of existing manpower and machinery with minimum fatigue incurred by the workers. The analysis mainly considers a movement of limbs and aims at finding a simpler and economical method of doing the job. 
the principles of a motion economy acts as a good guide in developing a better and improved method. We have also given onto a table as the operation chart symbols that we normally follow in this. Then we move on to the next one that would be the process chart. It is a step by step description of method used in a doing a particular job. It shows the flow of movement of work and is most helpful in calling attention to unnecessary steps and motion. It is an overall investigation. It requires at least two people to make a process chart. One will do the task and the other one will observe and record. The time is relatively unimportant as the focus is only upon the flow of work. The chart helps you visualize the sequence of an activity. For charting home tasks, the worker is followed throughout. It is customary that in this method of research to perform the chart and the same task in an original and then in a revised way. The count of symbols and the original way often indicates at a glance whether improvement may be made or required. The next would be the pathway chart is a simple device for making a motion and time study in the home. A flow plan is actually drawn to scale and fastened to into a drawing board or a wall board with pins and thread or all that is required to make such a study. A pathway chart focuses the analysis on the overall amount of travel and retracing of steps. The pin and string method of making pathways chart was actually suggested by Mrs. Gilbert. Yeah, I wish to conclude to say that fundamental information of anthropometric dimension and biomechanical properties of the abilities as well as the restrictions of human sensory organ and the hand arm system that is broad uh, work physiological knowledge of the characteristics of human organisms always was and will still will linger in the future as a prerequisite for the truly ergonomic design of workplaces and work tools. Work physiology symbolizes the nucleus of today's work science or ergonomics. Besides the errands and the objectives of work physiology in ergonomic education, the principles of work physiological research approaches are described. When evaluating workplaces and work tool, measuring the physiological cost which the organism or the organs have to pay must be measured. Thinking in terms of physiological cost of work guarantees safe guidance in order to achieve human oriented working condition. Ergonomic has gained a high rank but successful ergonomic interaction depend on comprehensive knowledge and experience and require core competency in work physiology as well in ergonomic work design.